morning again, everyone, and uh, happy uh, Whitsunday. Uh, Reverend Bob Cotter here again. Uh, I'm using uh, Service of Morning Pro 1, uh, the beginning on page 85. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy so though we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before god yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands to set forth his most worthy praise to hear his most holy word to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit. Those things may please him which we do at this present. The rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise you the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We turn to our first canticle, which is the Jubilate, which you can find on page 92. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we turn to our first lesson, and both lessons are from the King James Version of the Bible. 
uh, Numbers uh, 11, uh, verse 24 to 30. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. The Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, the name of the other was Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them. They were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Enviest thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? And Moses gat him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Now we turn to our appointed psalm, which is Psalm 68. The first 10 verses, and then the end, verse 32 to 35. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those that hate him flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so may they vanish away. As wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Well, let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them make merry with gladness. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds. The Lord is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of the fatherless, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners to songs of welcome but the rebellious inhabit a burning desert. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens dropped down rain at the presence of God, the Lord of Sinai, the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent down a gracious rain, O God. You refreshed your inheritance when it was weary. Your people came to dwell there. In your goodness, O God, you provide for the poor. Verse 32. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Make music in praise of the Lord. He rides on the ancient heaven of heavens and sends forth his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose splendor is over Israel, whose power is above the clouds. How terrible is God in his holy sanctuary, the God of Israel, who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Now we turn to our New Testament lesson, lesson which appropriately is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21, the account of the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all of these which speak Galileans? How hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? 
Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and in Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. They were all amazed, and were in doubt saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others, mocking, said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Now we turn to an appropriate second canticle, the Song of Wisdom, which you can find on page 132. Wisdom is the brightness of eternal light, the spotless mirror of God's power at work, the image of God's goodness. Wisdom is but one, yet she can do all things. Herself unchanging, she makes all things new. Age after age she enters holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets, beloved of God as her companions. Wisdom is more beautiful than the sun, surpassing every constellation of the stars. Her radiance is greater than the light of day, for day's light is followed by the night. Against wisdom no evil can prevail. She reaches mightily from one end of the earth to the other and orders all things well. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was and ever shall be. Amen. Now we turn to our prayers and collects. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And the collect for the day of Pentecost, Whitsunday. God, who as at this time does teach the hearts of thy faithful people by the sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort, 
through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. God, who are the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, just a few words on this day of Pentecost. There are a number of ways of thinking of it. Uh, I often see it as the reversal of the the Tower of Babel idea in Genesis 11, where God comes down and confounds the, the people who are getting a bit big for their butts and who look as if they would be a challenge to his authority. And then at uh, Pentecost, all languages are... Uh, un- people of all language backgrounds are able to understand the uh, apostles who are speaking, even though, of course, they think themselves to be speaking just in their own language. So it's also a wonderful sense at Pentecost of God's new empowering of his people, God's desire also to expand, to extend his spirit to the whole world, not to be any... Uh, more limited simply to uh, the Jews or selected groups of disciples. So it is in effect the birthday of the worldwide church where that spirit uh, can be seen to, to wish to expand itself among all of humanity. God's spirit is also no longer the preserve of the named special people of the Old Testament, or of those special people whom Luke mentions throughout his gospel, but in this second book by Luke, uh, we have instead the wonderful offer of uh, God's Spirit to whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and a token of them being saved will be the baptism in the Spirit. And we just thank God that on this birthday of the church, on this uh, sense of this new empowering, that we will be enabled to to tap into that power for these times that we live in and for every day of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we continue in prayer. We pray for the uh, the parishes here on the coast, parishes of Leyden, Cush and Dun, and for Alclinus, and for Tech McCreven. Loving Heavenly Father, creator and sustainer of all, whose love surrounds us and upholds us, whose mercy is showered upon us despite our failings, bless the work of these parishes, that they may be caring communities, where each one of us is alert to the needs of all others and quick to respond to those needs in practical ways, as people have been doing uh, in these particular times of difficulty in recent months. Pray that we may be here a learning community where each one of us continues to grow in our understanding of the faith, which we have been confirmed and are eager to bring others to share that faith and to encourage them to begin their journey of faith with the Holy Spirit and enable your church, O Lord, to be a living cell of the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, where all different traditions and all different individuals uh, so rich in that very individuality may be drawn together uh, in you and in your Spirit. Amen. We pray for the needy at this time, loving Heavenly Father. We pray for all who are in any way troubled at this time, especially those known to us. Grant relief to those who are in pain. 
friendship to those who are alone. Reassurance to those in doubt or distress of mind. To your keeping, O Lord God, we commend all whose enjoyment of life has been taken away by sickness, particularly the coronavirus, by tragedy, or by the sin of others. Lord Christ, shine upon us all who are in the darkness of suffering or grief, that in your light we may receive new hope, new courage, and that in your presence we may find our rest and peace for your love's sake. Amen. We pray for the nations of the world, Sovereign Lord of all rulers and all nations. We pray for all who are called to leadership at local, national and international levels. And we pray particularly today for all those who are MLAs or councillors here in Northern Ireland who are trying to steer us through uh, these events. Pray also for all those who have been uh, elected to uh, the uh, Parliament in Westminster at the uh, uh, election just a few months back now, but so readily forgotten and everything else that has occurred. And we pray for uh, MSPs and uh, MPs and uh, all who represent communities throughout these islands to be uh, men and women of responsibility and faith uh, who are looking out for the weakest and those who are least able to defend or to speak for themselves. Give all of them who have uh, been elected uh, the vision to see into the issues of these times, courage to uphold what they believe to be right and integrity in their works and motives. Make them defenders of liberty and champions of justice, so rule in their hearts that they may also be lovers and makers of peace. Almighty God, uh, we love for the time when your kingdom shall come on earth, when all nations shall acknowledge your sovereignty, seek your glory, and serve your good and righteous will. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a blessing using the words of Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 20, the NIV version. Let us pray. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good thing for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing in him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And we close as we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.